Hello and welcome to worship with members of Haywards Heath and Burgess Hill Methodist Churches. We gather on this two Sundays before the beginning of Advent for our worship and as we begin we use a prayer set for today in the Methodist worship book. So let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son Jesus Christ to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens or ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy, through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We sing together our opening hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. So the first of our three readings is from Daniel chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 1. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as has never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars for ever and ever. We then hear from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 11. And every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. 
that when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us, for after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as we see the day approaching. And then finally we hear from the Gospel of St Mark, chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 1. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another, all will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus said to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we sing our next hymn, My Soul Finds Rest in God Alone. Oh, yeah. 
riches come and riches go. Don't set your heart upon them. The fields of hope in which I sow are harvested in heaven. Oh, praise Him, hallelujah, mighty Let us pray. May I speak in your name, and may we all hear your word to us this day, O God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Joining with many Western branches of our church family, our liturgical year is drawing to a close, with the new one beginning on the 1st of December, which this year is the first Sunday in Advent. Throughout this year, we have mostly been journeying through Mark's Gospel. We end almost where we started, in Mark 13. As we look back over this last year and assess where our world is at the moment, 
it seems quite an appropriate reading. Jesus had entered Jerusalem on a donkey in that Palm Sunday procession. He had been into the temple and driven out the traders and sellers. Over the coming days, he and his disciples had been coming in and out of Jerusalem, sparring with various Jewish groups, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees. At the time, there were always rumours of revolution whispered through the streets, with groups of zealots waiting to overthrow the Romans. However, Jesus' disciples couldn't help but marvel at the temple which had been undergoing major redevelopment throughout their lives. It seemed so permanent and a point of stability in a fragile world. Jesus' response was both unsettling and reassuring. It was unsettling because he predicted that the very part of life that felt so secure, the temple, would actually lie in rubble. We know now that not long after these words, in AD 70, the temple was destroyed by the Romans in response to, uh, to, in response to attempts at overthrowing their rule. Maybe Jesus could see the direction the nation was going in. In our own age, we might notice signs that make our world feel fragile and uncertain. Globally, we might look at nations that we thought stable who are now embracing lovers of lying and misogyny. Or those presiding over climate change conferences speaking of gas and oil being a gift of God. We might see the scandals affecting the Church of England and other major institutions closer to home. In our own lives, ill health and grief may make our lives feel more unstable. Jesus doesn't promise us an easy escape from trouble in this life. Yet in the midst of that instability, Jesus offers us hope and reassurance. He reminds us that the whole of human history is held within the hands of God. However chaotic it might feel, God is still present as our sure ground and refuge from the storm. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us that through Christ's life, death, resurrection and ascension, we can all go straight to God in prayer. We are not cut off by the curtain preventing access to God to all but a few. Instead, we may now take all our cares and concerns to God and discover the God of peace with us through all life may bring. When it seems that the righteous and the poor do not receive justice, that the bullies and lovers of power prosper unchecked, the reading from Daniel reminds us that this life isn't all there is. It is the first reference in the Bible to the resurrection of all people, where the unjust and the oppressors will be judged by their deeds, and the innocent and righteous will discover that new life on the other side of death. It is natural and understandable to feel anxious and shaken by events in our world and in our lives, if we are facing times of trial. This is not a sign of a lack of faith. However, may we not abandon the fellowship of the family of God. Instead, as Hebrews encourages, may we continue to meet together, to strengthen one another. That might happen on a Sunday in our church buildings. It might happen over the phone. It might happen in each other's living rooms. However we gather... In our gathering, may we find our hope and faith in God renewed, knowing that God will see us safely through this life and bring us to the glorious life to come. Amen. So we sing our next hymn, We Lay Our Broken World.
Our prayers for God's church and world have also been taken from the Methodist worship book. I invite you when I say the words, your kingdom come, to join in the response, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. In faith, let us pray to God the Father, in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. God of love, we pray for the life of your church throughout the world. May every congregation be a community of love, and every Christian a witness to your grace. Renew all who worship with us today, that we may be a living fellowship in your spirit and serve our neighbourhood. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of mercy, we pray for the life of the world and for those who exercise power. Show us how to live as members of the human family, to reject the ways of war, to bear each other's burdens, and to work together for justice and peace. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of compassion, we pray for those who are ill or anxious at home or in hospital. We pray for those whose lives are filled with fear and despair. Draw near with your saving love and bring healing and hope. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of glory, we rejoice in the communion of saints. We remember all who have faithfully lived and all who have died. Help us to follow their example, and bring us with them into the fullness of your eternal joy. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We draw all these prayers together as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn that we had had a couple of weeks ago as well, For All the Saints, uh, who from their labours rest.
And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.